Cross sections have many uses in Creo Parametric. They can help you as you're designing. You can use them in designer views to explain your model to other people. And of course, you often use them in drawing views. And you can define the cross section in the drawing, but I find it a lot easier to do in the model. To create a section, there is the section command available on the model tab. It's also available on the view tab. Let's go back to the model tab. When I go down to the drop down, you can create a planar cross section. You can create cross sections in the X, Y, and Z direction. You can also do offset cross sections. And there is the old style of 3D cross sections from the zone. Let's go through these different examples. First off, let's create a planar cross section. So I will select a flat planar surface. You can also select a datum plane. And here we have a dragger that we could use to dynamically cross section the model. And there is a dimension value associated with that. You can change that dimension value by double clicking on it and entering in the value that you want. Let's walk through some of the other options from the dashboard. Next to the dimension, there is a flip button that allows you to flip the direction of the cross section. The next button, which is automatically selected, caps the surfaces of the cross section. Let me zoom in and I'm going to deactivate that to show you what it does. So if I turn it off, then the surfaces appear like they are hollow rather than there's actually solid material there. Most of the time, you'll probably have this turned on. The next button allows you to choose what color you want that capping surface to be. And right now it's using the model colors, but I can change to use this default color, or you could choose one of the other different colors from the palette. Let's go back to model color. The next icon allows you to apply cross hatching. Let me drag this back through here a little bit more. And when you have this cross hatching, Creo Parametric automatically gives different spacings and angles, and you can't change the angles or the uh, thickness of the, the cross sections here. I'll show you later on how you can do that from the model tree. The next button allows you to manipulate your section. So, for example, you know, you have the dragger that you can use for its position, but you can also rotate your section if so desired. And if you unclick the button, it'll go back to its regular planar cross section. The next button shows you a 2D view of the model. And right now, it's sort of showing rotated from the way that I want it to be. So you could use these buttons to make it rotate in the right direction how you want to view it. And what's nice about this is as you drag through the model, that 2D viewer dynamically updates with the position. Next up from the references tab, this is where you can change what surface is being used to define the cross section. On the models tab, by default, it's including all models, but you could say which models you want to be in the cross section, or if you want to exclude certain models from the cross section, you can do that. For example, I'll select this part up here and this part over here, and the cross section no longer affects them. From the options tab, you can check a box to show interference, and here it'll show interference in red, or you could change what color is being used. And lastly, from the Properties tab, this is where I can type in the name for my cross-section. I'll call this one Cross-Section A. So there's my first one. It's a planar cross-section. And when I hit the check mark, my cross-section is still active. Let me go to my model tree. And if you have your tree filters set to display sections, you will see them in the model tree. And I can right-click on it and then deactivate the cross section. And I'm still seeing the cross hatching. So you can have the hatching uh, enabled separately from the uh, actual capping of the model with the cross section itself. Okay, so I did the planar cross section. Now let's go to the section drop down menu and I'm going to do a cross section in the X direction. 
and the same rules apply. I can go and drag it in the different directions. Let's say that I decided that I wanted the cross section to be in the Y direction instead. I don't have to cancel out of here. You actually have a drop down list that allows you to change between X, Y, and Z. Let's go back to X. And instead of doing offset, you could do it through the uh, Y, Z plane in the X direction. You'll notice that when you change between through and offset, it actually changes what's available in the drop down list. But I'll leave offset so I have a numerical value that I could use to drag this and position my cross section exactly where I want it to be. And the rest of the controls here are pretty much the same as for uh, the planar cross section. And again, when I'm happy, I can go to the properties tab. Let's call this cross section B and hit the check mark. Again, there it is in the model tree, and I can deactivate it and say that I don't want to see the section. And also from that right mouse button, you have the ability to show the interference, and that's a, a nice little tool for making sure that you don't have any unwanted interferences in your model. Okay, next up, doing an offset cross-section. I'm not going to do Y or Z because X, Y, and Z you can all do from the same dashboard, but offset cross-section is how you can have a sketch define your cross-section. So I'll click on the offset cross-section and it needs a sketch. If you don't have one, you could define it within the tool. And I'm just going to sketch on the datum plane called assembly top. Let's hit the sketch button to go into sketcher and I'm going to reorient and I'm just going to sketch a couple of lines. And you don't have to put dimensions on it or, you know, get them locked into geometry. I'm just sketching really big lines that intersect through my model. Now I can right click and hit the check mark. And there I have my cross section defined by my sketch. I'm going to use the flip button because I want to see the main part of the model. And let's turn on our cross hatching and make it easier for you to see. Let's have the capping surfaces be the same color in here. And right now, my sketch defines a cut that goes through all in both directions. You could use these different depth drop down uh, lists to change it from through all to none in a particular direction. And we have flip buttons on the dashboard that, la that allow us to change which way we're viewing the model. And let's go and change this one to none and this one to through all. And there I have a 3D cross section the way I want it to appear. And again, you can go to the properties tab and rename it. If you forget to rename it from the dashboard, you can always rename it in the model tree. And let's deactivate this cross section and turn off my cross hatching. Oh yeah, if you want to change the cross hatching for different components, you can right click on the section and then underneath edit actions, there's an edit hatching button. And it'll bring up a dialog box and you're allowed to, you can use it to select the particular component. And then you could use this button to make the spacing bigger, this button to decrease the spacing, and uh, oh, here you have the angle where you can control. And it increases by increments of 15 degrees. And you can do that for one or more components. And there are arrow buttons that allow you to navigate through the different colors and you also have some standard cross hatchings available to you okay from the section drop down list there's one other command in here to mention and this is the zone command and this was the old way of doing uh, those sort of like 3d cross sections that I did from the previous command and so I could select maybe you know one side of a datum plane and then hit the plus sign you could construct these different zones by using the positive or negative side of different datum planes. 
and if you click on the preview button here it shows you the combination of what would be in this zone that I'm defining by using this half space method you could also click on the drop down list and do inside or outside of a quilt or a radial distance from some selected entity or define a zone by offsetting different X, Y, and Z values from a coordinate system. And so when I click OK, this is actually going to create a cross section in my model called XSEC001. Now the strange thing is it's not available from the sections at the bottom of your model tree, but if you go into the view manager, here you'll see it and from here you can right click on it and maybe instead of having that default name I want to call this cross section D but again really you can do everything that you need to do uh, from the planar cross section and also from the offset section it's pretty much what you'll use most of the time I hope you enjoyed this video Please visit www.creolewindchill for more information. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are added. Thank you very much.